So, uh, hello everyone, I'm Irfan. Uh, I work as a lead QA in one of the education startup in Mumbai called as Upgrad.com. Basically, we are an online learning platform. Uh, we help start other startups grow and learn. So, if you are planning to do that, just browse us sometime. Uh, this is my, uh, my Twitter handle, Kritiker. So the icon is of one of the tools related to Docker. Uh, he's just a very naughty octopus. He's just trying to catch the Selenium tool and he's trying to pack it in containers so that he can actually ship things properly. How many of you have uh, worked with Docker or something? Did work with Docker? I think we can start now. So you might have heard a lot about testing, testing as a practice, then testing as a service, testing as a, uh, now testing as a container. So, so what is it like? Something new or the same thing, just wrapping in new words. Let's see and find out. So. Why, why do I need to think about Docker? Why, like, why should I even think about it? Like, what, what is the use for me or for you? Like, you guys are coming. What is the use? What will happen to you after this talk or demo? So we are here. We all are Ganga Dutt. So, so we, this is a normal guy like me. We, I have a bad side, I have a good side. Nothing is focused, like I have a lot of energy, but nothing is focused. I have a lot of things, but nothing is packaged into right format. Now if I know something, uh, how many of you know about Shaktiman? So in 97, 98, like I used to be a fan of Shaktiman. And I used to wonder what makes Shaktiman different from Gangadhar. Like he's the same person. And what I came to know after a few years of my childhood research is, it's all about packaging. Because everybody is made up of some components, some elements. And so what Shaktiman did was, he just uh, practiced meditation and packaged his all chakras into the right format. Took away all the evil parts, only the good parts, and he became Shaktiman. So you all are Gangadhars also, and you can become Shaktiman. Like, I wish I could become Shaktiman. But I need to know packaging. So when we say testing as a container, it's all about how we package stuff, how we package to ship the things forward. So OK. So for few people who have joined here, uh, we're going to transform uh, Gangadhar into Shaktiman after this talk. So I'll discuss the outline. I think very brief. Uh, why do we need like why do we need Docker or containers? Uh, what container is about? So how does it work? And how testers can actually use it? Many people think that it's not using for it's used in testing, but not for testers. And like really works, so we'll see demo. And okay, I learned this about next, what I can do. So this is our outline for next 30 minutes. So the first is challenges. Uh, how many testers here? Everybody, I'm scared now. Testers do like, okay, I'm scared. So, <laughs> so what are the challenges in your testing? Like, what are the challenges you face? Testing environment. <laughs> Anything other than that? Time. Test data. Test? Flakiness, yes. So 
I think it's very similar to uh, the research I did on like some 12, 13 people. And what they said is that they are, they are failing to test because it slows down the deployment process. Like they don't want to, do, to slow down their process because of doing a lot of testing. The time constraint came here. Second thing was slow test and so slow down deployment means a lot of checks and validation things and doing high level ch check kind of stuff. Second thing that a uh, lot of people said and it's like the same kind of uh, opinions I got here is that slow test and setup, like setting up the tests along with test data like she mentioned and the environments, everything is very cumbersome and bulky and people say like okay how to the extent we can do it we will do it otherwise we will skip the test the third is very dangerous actually it's ineffective test somebody mentioned flaky test so it comes into that so like when when people in your company they start they stop losing uh, they don't they have no hope on a test they like sometime it pass sometime it fail so the test becomes ineffective again reason somewhere lying because of some problem with not with the test cases, the test case doesn't change, but some problem with the test environment and other stuff. And then like 5%, like maybe in some three months, they think that they don't need it. So is container a new term? It's a new thing that we, we just really invented a few years back? No, obviously. So the shipping industry has a problem. Used, they used to have a problem like from ages. They 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 were supposed to carry goods, and the goods were available in different different shapes, as you can see. Like we have spherical, we have circular, we have large stuff. Like just imagine you are shipping your house, everything. When you are shipping your house from one place to another, how how do the packers and movers or you pack your stuff? Like you carry each thing, like you carry your piano and then you carry your fridge. How do you ship it? You package it into containers. Every every package looks same because the person who is shipping it, he his job is just shipping it. So, so, so package container helps there. So from there we took this concept of containerization, and we said like, it sounds very similar to. Okay. It sounds very sim simple, uh, simple uh, similar to the software terms also. We have like web server, like every software is different. But then when we have to ship it, we have to ship it in some format which just works. You know, uh, whenever, I, like when I was a kid, uh, some relative used to come to my house and then they used to say like, okay, they used to give me a gift. Some people used to give, give me a gift of like, uh, they used to give me garments, not shirt. So. I was I used I don't used to be like happy. So I like okay I have to go to tailor and then I have to give measurement and then I have to like wear it. Will take like three four months. But if someone gives me a like ready made t-shirt or a shirt I'm happy because I can just use it. I can show like this is how. It so if something works just out of the box, this is what container is about. So we have a similar problem in software also that we have software of different. We have a software of different kinds. We have web servers, databases, everything had different needs, requirements, and all are to be shipped on different places. Like, uh, if I have an application, I need it shipped on the production servers, like huge clusters. I have to ship it on my local machine, which is a Mac or Windows. I have to ship it on test environments, which may be a slightly lower configuration server. Everywhere I do, and I don't have to think about it. So we took the practice of shipping and shipping industry and say like, okay, we'll use in software, like the mature industry. You can see that uh, how easy it is to ship things to Docker. So, okay, so next session was the next uh, unit was about containers. So what are containers? In simple word, containers is something that a software that does works. It has everything. It has code, it has libraries, dependencies, it has got 
the uh, code plus configuration, everything packaged together, and you just can build and run it. It's a portable runtime environment. Uh, maybe a different. So this presentation is all about change in mindset. We don't have to uh, like as a tester or as a you don't have to ship just your code and like like you can say like this is my code and it, it may work after you do some configuration. No, like it's, you can you will say this is my image, go and just run it. It will just work. So you have to think out of container because inside container it's all messy. So okay, so. Docker is something which helps us to build container, to spawn containers, and to maintain it. Uh, so it's if you go on Docker dot Docker dot Docker dot IO website, they say it's uh, it's a platform for like I like I like this thing like build, ship, and run, like making things simple. So that is what Docker does. Docker has got three components. Uh, the first two are the client and the Docker engine. So these two have to be installed on your uh, machine, whichever machine you work. Uh, it can be your uh, local machine or any server. It contains a client and a Docker host. And then there is called something called as registry where uh, you ship those images uh, where you. Uh, code and everything is shipped on those images. So this is how, uh, okay, image and registry. This is how Docker Hub looks like. Yeah, you might have, everybody might know about GitHub. So yeah, Docker Hub is the answer of GitHub for doc, like it's, it works not exactly the same, but they like, if you have worked with GitHub, it works similar to that. It is working on that, uh, it works layers by layers. So if you want my code, if you want some co some application code, you can uh, clone it from uh, GitHub. Similar to that, if you want my image and just make it work, you have to clone it from Docker Hub. And it works on layers, like they have tagging everything feature. It's awesome. So you might have worked with, or you might have seen about virtual machines and you say like so few years before we just entered into virtual machine now something else container why like why do I need containers and how it's different uh, the difference is that uh, you can say in very simple words uh, it's a lightweight virtual machine so what happens is every, with every VM it comes with its own OS like if I have if I have a three services in my application so I have to install uh, if I want to keep them separate, I have to have like three different OSs and install those applications. Whereas container removes that hypervisor part or the OS for that and replaces it with a Docker engine. And each of these applications work as a container. It's a lightweight, uh, container, li lightweight VM, you can say. Yes, it shares the kernel OS. Uh, I'm not going into too much detail, but you can just understand it like uh, a lot of stuff is being shared. It's and it's way light more than using a virtual machine. So if you are using virtual machine, a uh, lot of people also confuse between Vagrant and Docker. So if you're using Vagrant, so it is used for managing the uh, virtual machine, whereas uh, containers uh, Docker is used for managing containers, which is way more lightweight than that. Uh, you can use both together because you uh, you may need both of them. But these two does actually different things. Yeah. So how uh, these components fit together? Like uh, we saw in registry that there is something called as Docker image. Uh, we just go back. There, there we uh, we see like it's Docker image. So container is something like a, so you know about uh, uh, the class and object thing. So class is uh, just an instance of an object. So the image is the static snapshot of uh, your code plus configuration, and from that you spawn containers. So I have an image for like NGX server, so I can 
have multiple containers, I can spawn it up. So that is a Docker image. So how does it all fit together is that you have your OS and kernel, then there is a host OS. Over that you have your images. And then there is a Docker image over that. And then uh, over the Docker image, your containers are placed. So uh, we may come back to after, like after demo, we can come after this, and we can have a look together. So what's the life cycle like? How an image is built, and how container is spawned? Like it can become a chicken and egg problem. Like which comes came first, and which is used to build what? So we have first, we build first container. So if I have an app and it is not based on container, it's not based on, there is no image for that. I, what I will do is, uh, suppose I have a web application which works on Nginx or Apache. So I have an official image of Apache. I will make changes, I will create a contained project. What I will do next is, after making this uh, changes in the image, I will again store it. I will again uh, push it and create an, uh, another image. I will push it to registry or any other place. Like you may not need registry. You want to be like, after pushing that, you have a new image. You can share it and then again keep the change and commit cycle. So this is how actually uh, the entire cycle works. So when you work with Docker and images, how it works is that uh, suppose you have an app that you want to ship to uh, another person. So you give the image name, just like just like you give your GitHub ID an image name. So how it works is that you install Docker, you inst you say Docker run, it looks for that particular uh, image in your local. If it's not found. Uh, it if it's not installed, it will look on the uh, Docker Docker registry. It will pull it from there, and it will install. And then you can, when because you are saying run it, so you will. So when you say run, it will spawn a new instance and will create a container. So this is how it works. Okay, so. How many of you are aware of DevOps? So, what is DevOps and like wh what is the principle behind DevOps? Like, what, the, what does it say? How it is different from uh, like what is it so something which is new in DevOps? Okay. So that was okay. So, at what point you will say that okay, I have started this DevOps culture? ownership and collaboration. But that is what Agile also says. Full stack. Okay. So yeah, so basically one of the principle of DevOps, sorry, DevOps is that everything should be code. Like your, co your application should be code, your infrastructure should be code, your test should be code, everything should be code, specification should be code. So when everything is code, you can, it's very easy to move from version one to two and three and then to come back, okay, no, no, not three and two. Very easy to do that, and it actually improves the entire process. So one of the principle is that, and so how do you do it? Like, how do you create images? How do you create containers? So one of the simplest thing is Docker file. So if you want to write, if you want to code your configuration, you have to use Docker file. One of the simplest thing is. So it's a configuration file with build instructions. So you might have seen on GitHub, like there are projects like Selenium also. So you clone the code and then you see, okay, these are the requirements. I have to install Java first, okay, this version, and then I have to install this first. It's not working. Oh, I install Maven, everything. So it's written there. So that you have to code in Docker file. This is one of the example. Uh, so basically, you take the references from the existing images. Uh, 
uh, on the registry and whatever is new and whatever is depending on uh, whatever is new in your application you just write in there's a sim syntax for it it's very very simple uh, if ganga kadar ganga kadar can do it i think you can also do it so you just keep adding this stuff like this is a sim this is for simple uh, uh, python based web app so we just adding those dependencies requirement dot text is install run so that it will do so from docker file you create images uh, uh, containers and then you store and create images uh, but what happens is uh, any small application also it is, it is not just a one single application or one service it has back end and front end it has lot of other so uh, docker works on principle like every process should be a different container it has that Uh, you can say a feature or limitation or feature or bug or something like that. <laughs> so, so in that case, you have to manage multiple containers. So, the simplest tool to manage sim uh, multiple containers is Docker Compose, where you mention that these are my processes. Like my uh, service is listening to this this uh, Postgres SQL database on this port. So, all these things you specify with Docker Compose, so it's managing the. It's a tool for defining and running uh, multi-container Docker applications. Uh, in, even in fact, in like uh, in, in even with simplest of the application, we require Doc Docker Compose. It's a file, yeah. It's a YAML file. Uh, YAML file is basically uh, Docker Compose is a tool, and Docker Compose dot YAML is a file. So these are the way. So if you see this example here. uh there is a new version of docker compose 2.0 as per that you mention those uh if you are uh if you are building it you, you you add your build command in our case it is uh it's already on registry you can see define h slash example voting app the image is already there on the uh registry so we just give a link and then we say uh what all things are getting connected to it uh we'll see in this demo like what exactly each and everything mean but this is what it exactly looks like okay so we reach to the demo part yeah Can we? Uh, sorry for interrupting. Can we do this after demo? Like maybe it gets resolved automatically. Or so you have to install a tool called as Docker in your Mac. So just thing. There are few things in demo itself. So there are some prerequisites. The only prerequisites uh, in the older Docker or the current Docker, you have you need to have a virtual box. and you need to download docker toolbox just link on this link and after you install it uh, this is for the old docker there is a one new beta for docker which is released like uh, two months back it got released and it's in beta phase so i think it will take few more months uh, to become stable so what they have done is it is uh, now it is com getting completely compatible to all platform windows and everything and you don't need another uh, virtual machine manager like virtual box but yeah yes exactly yeah so for this because this is some something which uh, what i wanted was that if you are coming here so you can just do hands on everything so this is what exactly you will have so we'll go with the older one which is the current one so after this uh, there is an example voting app which we will test It's a real-time voting app based on Python flag. So, it just whenever you have a conflict in mind, you just have to see like if it's a bug or feature. So, depending that you can decide it's a bug or feature. Simple web app, and uh, it has these components. So, every component will be a container. Uh, we have a database, 
uh, we have uh, backend Redis and our worker for async. So each of these will become a container. Um, as a tester, I have a problem statement that I don't want to really understand how this application is, and I don't get, need to get scared. I'm already scared actually, but I don't need to get scared more. I want to test in this my local machine. I don't have any server, like I'm working in a, uh, I don't have a server for this. I want to work, I want to test this entire in my local machine. And this is the task given to me that to deliver the below test as a container uh, to test the voting app, Docker image. So what the do developers have done is they have delivered me this voting app. In a, they have given me a Docker image for this and I have to give Docker image for my test. Uh, API test, web, uh, headless, and Selenium grid test. Okay. So there is a tool called Docker Start. So once you start it, uh, this will give you a, assign you a default image. It, it creates, for the first time when you do it, it takes a little more time, like three minutes, or sometimes maybe more. It creates an image on virtual your virtual box, called as default. And so this is the VM, and all the containers will be inside this by default. Like for this at least example, hands-on, you can you, it will be all on default. So you have this default, the IP is here, and you can just say Docker machine, and then there are a lot of commands here. You can just play with it, you can start, and you can shut down, you can log in, and like I can check the simple things, the IP, environment, URL versions, and there's another command line. There's another com uh, another command line called as Docker. So you have a lot of options to play with. So Docker is uh, you can do a lot of things with that. You can build and you can check the process. So Docker is something which manages uh, all the activities related to container, whereas the Docker machine manages everything with your uh, virtual machine that you, you, that you saw on the virtual box. So, next I will write Docker PS to, oh, so something is regarding, uh, sorry, okay, something was running. If I just check, okay, there's just one image. Okay. If I, okay. So it tells what all Docker instances are running, and you can do a lot of things like you can Docker SSH with this IP, you can log in, you can check, you can. SSH into each and every of these containers and you can check what is happening there. So we have a repository where the repository where I have written the tests is the docker file okay. somewhere I have kept the docker file so there are some dependencies which are very specific to this test framework and there are some things which are already available so whatever things are already available I don't need to write my docker file for this a few things that I need. The my test framework is based on. It's a simple uh, framework based on uh, Cucumber and Ruby. So whatever things are specific to my project, like it's 
it, uh, from Ruby latest, so it takes the Ruby from uh, registry, the whichever is latest. And then I need, uh, for headless, I need phantom version. I need to install this dependency. And then uh, these are just Unix commands. And it, whatever comes after run is just Unix commands. So you're actually just creating a directory and mounting it to a particular uh, directory structure. And then bundler is used for building a Ruby app. So that we need to do. So these are the instructions that I do. What are the instru what are the things that you do before running your app? This is what I did like for the first time. This is my first time configuration. So I have mentioned it in my Docker file. So after this, uh, I created an image and I pushed it on the Docker Hub. And there is a Docker Compose file. So you saw the example app. So uh, in the example app, you have a voting app. It has got image. I mentioned the image here. Uh, I mounted it on volume app. It it's working on port 5000 AP. So this is basically 5000 is uh, inside the container, AP is mapped to the virtual machine. Then it is linked to whichever other components like uh, this particular voting app backend is connected only to Redis. It's, it is linked to Redis and it can access the front tier and back tier. So front tier and back tier, these are uh, two different uh, services. So all these things, so these are these, uh, these voting app, result app, worker, Redis, DB, these are all the components that were given me by the developers. Right, like you saw the diagram there. These are not built by me. And this is what we are using for test. Uh, we are uh, writing one service called as hub, you can give any name, and then you specify the image. Uh, there is a project called as Selenium Docker. Are you aware of it? Like, you've seen it, okay, yeah. awesome. So it's so awesome that you don't, if you just work, if you just need Selenium, you don't have to write a Docker file or compose anything for, uh, for that purpose. If you have any dependency other than Selenium, then you can start writing Docker file for it. And Docker, writing a Docker file for Selenium is not recommended because it's already there and it works very, very good. So the image of hub I have taken from Selenium project uh, Docker. Uh, it's mapped to the four, four standard four. And we want to see how it works. So we have two debug uh, nodes for uh, Chrome debug and Firefox. These are, sorry, two uh, images. And then uh, there'll be a lot of data also uh, which will be shared between all these services. So that will be in volume and mentioned it here. And then uh, the network, this name of the network, which are being shared between these two. So, so this, that, that's it, I think, because uh, this Docker Compose app is helping us to, uh, to manage dependencies between all the containers, it's application container or it's our test container. We can go on adding our own other components also uh, to do that. So if you do Docker Compose, see if the Docker is there. So to run Docker, uh, to run all these containers at once and to uh, do, do uh, activities on that, you use command Docker Compose. So Docker Machine, Docker, and Docker Compose, these are the three very useful and uh, mostly used commands. So all the activities that you do with Docker, you can do with Docker Compose also. Selenium? Yes, uh, good question. So, so uh, test will come on later. I will just uh, bring up the all the components up, and I will go through the test also. Yeah, I'm just bringing up the application under test. Yeah, 
that's it. So I'm I'm kind of building some uh, just bringing up the application uh, itself along with that the Selenium and my Docker file as well. Yes. No, no test is being done. So I can mention that here too, but uh, but but that is something that like uh, compose uh, is just about uh, bring, like you can you can add it here also. But test we want to run independently, so I have not mentioned here. Mentioned here, like you, you can try doing that, but it's simpler to keep it separate because your tests are being. You don't want everything, your application also because you want to understand how uh, we are running test as a separate container along with application as a set of containers. So how container interact with user? You want to understand that. Yes, yes, this part only. No, no, no. we will come after. Uh, we'll just come after. So we'll just control that. Uh, so all these services which are mentioned here, this will come up. The grid starts here only. Uh, because grid is something which keeps running and you just connect to it. So, yeah. so we'll see this something local host, so it should work. Uh, this is our app. You can create multiple sessions and you can just attach to it. So I'll say bug and then I give results here. So it's getting updated. Some of the data, like some of the attempts that I made earlier, it's also coming up, which is storing the data. So this is the application, simple application. And our grid is working on this. Okay. This port, you can see few browser sessions here. Uh, it's very easy to scale up and down. Like you can have a lot of sessions, but we just want to play with a couple of them. So this is the application. I say bug once more. Uh, see some changes happen. Okay. So that's it. Your application and your uh, grid. Now, uh, how the tests are being managed? So we saw the Docker file. So apart from Docker file, uh, this is being shipped in the form of image. So uh, there is a Docker script for it. Uh, for starters, it's, it's a very good thing. Uh, basically, when your infrastructure expands, you need to do, use tools like uh, automatic provisioning tools like Puppet or Chef, something else. But for starters, it is very good to have some uh, shell scripts to to manage those containers. You need to bring up. You need to make sure that it gets shut down properly. So, so what the script does is basically it executes and it tells at what location our uh, at what location our test is being stored. That's actually the script does it like in simple words. So we have the features. We are writing uh, three types of tests: web, uh, API, web and API. Two types of tests. Like, like whether it's you are run run on grid and it doesn't matter. So these features are these features are here. So what I'm doing is, as a single user, I'm voting and I'm checking that uh, I'm able to vote on both of these pages and. And API side also, I should see that when I'm hitting those APIs, I should get responses from like pretty simple test case uh, to make things work. So these are our two tests. Uh, then uh, the page objects are maintained on the pages for directory. So it is mapped on this structure. Uh, like you know about page objects. So we have elements here and then setting words and getting title for verification. Then we have page objects for app also, uh, for APIs also. Like we have two APIs. One is 
I have hard coded the URL. Not a good practice, but I have done it here. So I have mentioned here the parameters. So it's just like a page object model for API also. So this is pages, and then implementation is here. loading the page both and setting the choices and and taking a screenshots so that's it i think not too many things to test but just making sure that the everything works and you can try it out uh, we have an environment file uh, how many people use cucumber okay how many people use ruby just just i was curious so so uh, in case of uh, web test uh, we can we have a different browser we are using capybara to manage selenium and we can use firefox chrome locally or we can use a, a driver register uh, we can register our driver selenium which works on the grid this is the uh, this is the url for the grid that we are using Uh, or you can use a poltergeist which is a headless wrapper for which is a wrapper for headless browser phantom js and and you can also run it on browser stack if you have a your id you can try it this is this will just simply work and there is a travis every time i do some check in it gets executed on It runs some tests, API tests that make sure that things are fine, simple. And then I have a rake file. So I mentioned the server name. Uh, in case of API test, I tell them uh, I just mention them server name. And so in case if I want to do local execution, I don't mention Docker. Otherwise, I mention Docker. So what it does is, uh, it invokes a Docker script. Docker script brings up the uh, the image and creates a container out of those the Docker file that we mentioned. And what it does is, uh, it executes the task. So whatever task we are mentioning, like web or web app, uh, web app is basically uh, I've just a different task to run it on grid, and web is the one which runs on the uh, headless mode so so if you want to try this so we see here uh, the compose is working then if you want to see our test if you want to see uh, our web test you just write so uh, we have a readme file where everything is mentioned uh, it's very interesting that If you want to set up without Docker, this whole repository, it's like it will take you like one and a one hour at least. If you have good connection, internet, uh, it has so many dependencies. Uh, especially if you have to install APM also. But if you have, if you have to do like without Docker, so it is just Docker compose up, and then these three commands. So it will still take time, like thirty minutes, but it won't. Uh, like you don't have to stay there. So, if you want to run our API test, so we'll say rake Docker API. Sorry. And so, what is happening is basically. Rake. Yes, it understands. So basically, the rake is something uh, you can use. A uh, rake is something a build tool for Ruby. So it is just used for like you mentioned tasks, and uh, those those tasks will map to some command. It is just simplifying the. Uh, you can use Gradle or something else if you're using Java. Or so what it does is it looks for the image which is mentioned. It finds out 
it's already exists so we just run the container and it says it, do we have already a container existing so we don't make a new container we just bring that up and here we have started the execution and so we're like two tests passed if you want to run so if you want to see the web version of this you want to see the real how it's happening you need to install uh, vnc I'm using a real window. It takes some time to. Any questions? to use uh, in, in real in practice so in practice you use some provisioning tool along with it like you use some thing called as like some share for puppet or you, you can we have to write uh, in, in that case it's like things are so much dynamic in a lot of cases things are not so dynamic because so you used to use some provisioning tools which handle those things like we have just used shell script here so that does the work of and that replaces and creates a new docker uh, compose file every time but this is how it's being composed and being done yeah so uh, it's not different from traditional ci system uh, only it's how you set up the things because what pain you like i have a couple of friends who used to work we used to work together like we used to have set up our tests locally on mac and there was one guy who set up on windows then our ci was actually linux and then our production was a little different. We had to do setups. We, every time we have to do something changes with our infrastructure part of it, we have to do changes, make changes everywhere. So that just helps us to do, we just have to like, whoever's developing it, just we have to change the mentality that don't just see, just give you a code, give a complete image. Let us work and make it happen. Yes, yes. Same, everything is same. Everything is same, yes. The shipping method changes each year. Just make work easy. To have that URLs mentioned, we can we can access the local host also. Then it's also perfectly fine. Like best ideal case will be everything is container, but it may happen that you, some developer is not giving you images, and you're not going to build it. I am not going to build a backend for me. So, in case if it's not there, then I'll just give the link. If it is there, I will be happy, and I will just make it part of my Docker Compose.
does you do like current event? How does he manage current event? No, but uh, I think it's same thing. So that is actually out of scope of Docker because it needs all those links and inputs that what it needs to connect and everything. So it basically is. Just have that. Write a one command like scale ten, and you have like ten new sessions, new browser sessions. In the same same grid. Yeah. So currently, it's it it works same way how it used to work traditionally. Like traditionally, also like you have you're spinning up a lot of browsers, it will slow down. So. Yeah, so these these two. So uh, I I wasn't able to show the grid part demo, but is that you saw that node uh, uh, Chrome and Chrome debug and these two are actually different uh, containers. So if you have like two more tests you should run, every will every each of one uh, each of these will have a different container. 